Hello, welcome to the something 1100th of March. Yes. Anyway, today I am making some brioche buns. Never made brioche in my life, uh, so I've always wanted to try. So why not? Um, I have scoured the internet for and my cooking books and such like and my bakery books for a really easy recipe. Um, I was going to do Paul Hollywood's, um, but that takes like overnight in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I found this one on um, Sainsbury's online. So this is what I'm using. Um, I have got. I am using my stand mixer because I really struggle with raw, uh, kneading dough and such like so that's why I'm using my you can obviously by all means if you don't have a stand mixer with a door hook use your hands and knead 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 so I've got 600 grams of strong white bread flour I have got one and a half teaspoons of salt I've got uh two tablespoons of caster sugar I've got two eggs beaten i'm just going to put it on at the front for a second i've got a little bit of oil for oiling my bowl later on i have got 50 mils of milk which is uh tepid it's kind of blood temperature when you put your finger in doesn't feel hot doesn't feel cold uh, and the same with my water uh which i've got 250 mils of it i might not need all of it we'll see how it goes with that uh, it does call for two teaspoons of fast action yeast. I think there's seven grams in one of these sachets, which is like a teaspoon. So I've got two sachets, so I will measure it anyway as well. So let's get cracking. <laughs> Excuse the pun as I pick my eggs up. So into my mix, my bowl. Um, I am going to be adding my salt on one side, my sugar on the other side, and my yeast. Like I say, I'm not sure how much this is going to do, teaspoon wise. Ooh, right, so. There's one teaspoon. You know, it might be. It is. So one of these sachets holds two teaspoons. So one seven gram pouch is two teaspoons of yeast. I've just spilled a lot of it there. Only a little bit though. So I'm going to give this a little mix together. Combine it all the way through. Uh, let me just check. It says rub in the softened butter until it looks like breadcrumbs. So I'm bored of that, so I'm going to use my hand. Clean washed hands, obviously. So I'm just mixing this through just to make sure that everything is nicely combined so the yeast is going to get to feed on the sugar but it's not going to get um killed off by the salt etc so there is my butter which is i can't remember if i said 100 grams of soft butter that's nice and soft because we want that to mix in nice and easily so i've chopped it into little cubes so it will combine easier. So I'm just going to put that on. That's that minimum speed until it resembles breadcrumbs. So I will pause you and come back in a minute. Bye. So that's about where we are. Um, it's not. I'm very aware that it's not combined all the way through, but I'm using the door hook, and once the liquid's in, that's going to blend it a little bit easier anyway. So into there, I am pouring, I'm gonna, let's just take that off a sec. I'm gonna make a bit of a well in the middle. 
not that you really need to when you're doing it with the door hook but the recipe says to do that so i am adding the eggs they were just lightly beaten two medium and the milk And then we're just going to start that off again nice and slowly just so it comes together and it will it says it will be start to make a dough gradually add in the tepid water as you go until you have a soft dough so we shall do that now how much have i put in there so i've put about i've put 100 mil in there going to let it catch a little bit more from the sides and I reckon there's yeah so I've got 50 mil left so I've got 200 mil in there just knocking the flour down off the sides I'm going to put the rest of this water in. I'm a firm believer when it comes to um, bread, even though me and bread are not very good friends, uh, the wetter the better when it comes to bread. Um, that's tips that I got from Mr. Paul Hollywood. So that has combined, so I'm now going to pop that up to about number two and I'm going to give that uh, about five minutes on that just to see how it goes uh, if you're hand kneading it you're going to have to transfer it onto a floured worktop not too much flour though um, and knead it for about ten minutes so with the door hook should take about five to seven so I'll check back in five minutes so this has had about nine minutes um, getting nice and stretchy so what I'm going to do is tip it out onto a very lightly floured worktop and get it off the door hook get rid of that my spatula I think with it being an enriched dough because it's got all the butter in and the eggs in that's why it's just been a bit otherwise for me I don't know so I'm literally just going to give that it's still nice and warm a couple of turns feels nice and soft and elastic yet yeah, lovely so using the oil that I got earlier I am just gonna pop a little bit in there just give it a nice coating all the way up the sides now my kitchen varies greatly temperature wise because the back door is always getting open the closed open the closed and uh, the boys are outside fixing a bike at the minute so I am just gonna pop that
into there. I'm going to cover it with cling film and then I've set my oven on really, really low and I'm going to sit it on the door in front of the oven. So it's getting like a constant warmth, but a really low warmth. Ordinarily, you know, if you've got a, if you've got a lovely warm airing cupboard, pop it in there. If your kitchen's warm, pop it there. If you've got somewhere you can sit it, uh, windowsill, whatever, so it's nice and warm and toasty. I mean, it's nice and sunny here today. But who knows what it'd be like in half an hour or so. Um, so that is going to need about, well, it's one to two hours, basically. So as long as it doubles in size. So we can see where we're at now. Um, trying to figure out if we can see. It's kind of a third full of the door, let me just get my cling film. There's my cling film. And then that can sit. Just in front of the oven. For, turn it down a little bit more. Um, couple of hours, so I will see you soon. Bye bye. So it's been about two and a half hours. Look at that. <laughs> so that's exciting. Uh, I need to knock it back. It basically means punching it. Fun times. Badoink. <laughs> I am going to, ew, sticky. Pop it out. Onto my work top. And give it a little a little knead together just for just for a minute or so doesn't need any more flour or anything because it's got the oil oh, there's the dishwasher finishing and um, because it's got the oil that we coated the tin with oh it feels all bubbly and lovely inside <gasps> hopefully that hasn't stopped. Come on, there we go. Oh, my phone went on to low, uh, well, it's nearly out of charge, basically. So, oh, lovely. So I am going to use my door scraper, my bench scraper, and cut that in half. This makes 12. So I'll cut that in half. And then these into three. So 12 equal pieces. Don't have one of these, just use a round edge knife. Now my friend Jez, Mr. Giuseppe Romano, is a chef at Stockdale's in Leeds, head chef. I'm very proud of him. He's my brother from another mother. And I am sure when he sees this, he's going to be proud of me because I'm proud of me. So all we're doing, creating like a claw, a claw, and then giving that a twirly whirly. Like so. So it's a nice little tight shaped ball. And then onto a lined baking tray and put in six on each now apparently if you're very clever you can do 
two at a time with these. Should we try? <laughs> I feel clever. <laughs> and what I'm doing, the reason why you're doing them in this shape is because you're getting them nice and tight on the top. Oh yeah, that was fun. Feel dead clever down here like this. Although my left hand's not really wanting to do the same as my right hand. Proof paper or baking parchment. And the same again, and one of them looks really small, so I'm just going to pinch a little bit of dough. There we go. That's my ginger biscuits. You see that recipe in a bit. <laughs> well, they make me happy. So now, going to get some cling film and oil it and then cover them and obviously the reason why you oil it is so that the cling film doesn't stick on the buns and or rolls whichever you want to call them um, and rip them apart because obviously we don't want that happening so I'm just using sunflower oil, giving that good brush over. And then these are gonna prove for another maybe hour until doubled in size again and then they're going to be ready for the oven and then we're going to have beautiful brioche buns so how cool is that little to no work I mean I pay 79 pence for four in Aldi's and I'm making I've made 12 here or a lot less I would assume probably looking at maybe a pound or so for the whole dozen there we go And it's nice and toasty in my kitchen now because I've got the oven on. So these can just stay where they are. And do their own little thing. I don't want to tuck that round because I don't want to restrict the growth of them. Rookie mistake. There we go. So that'll just grow. Back in a bit. So... These have approximately doubled in size. Just take the little 
quarts off them. Apparently they should be soft and pillowy to the touch. Oh, they are. Uh, so I've made a glaze for the top. So this is one egg with a tablespoon of water and a pinch of salt beaten together. This is, like I say, it's just a glaze for the top. And then I'm just gonna brush this over in its entirety, being very careful so I don't knock all of that beautiful air out of these rolls, buns. Uh, the oven is on gas mark six, and I've also got a shallow roasting tin, it's actually a Swiss roll tin, in the bottom of the oven. Uh, and in that, I'm going to put some water so it creates steam. So these end up with a lovely soft top as opposed to a crunchy top because they are supposed to be burger buns. Um, these are going to be pulled pork buns <laughs> if they get that far. Um, and they are going to need 25, 20 to 25 minutes in the oven. Uh, again, because my oven doesn't um, take two trays on one shelf, I'm going to have to swap them over at some point. So I'll have one on the top shelf and one slightly further down. Um, but it is what it is. I don't like my oven, can you tell? Nearly done. Now, you can, if you wish to, sprinkle sesame seeds on the top of these before they go in. I don't have any, hence why they're not getting any. I do have black sesame seeds, but me. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to sprinkle them with black sesame seeds. I like the white sesame seeds on a burger bun. Now hopefully I've not ruined these by letting all this egg drip all over the um, baking paper. Just make sure I've got that covered all the way around. Because as you know, a brioche bun is nicely glazed across the top. A lot of recipes call for loads of butter to be put on, but I'm going with this Sainsbury's one, which uses an egg wash. That'll do it. So, I'm just gonna pop these in. create some steam and then tuck them away for 25 minutes. I'll tell you what I'll give them 50, 60, give them 16 minutes and then I shall flip the tins around on like flip the shelves around and give them their extra time. Okay, bye. Moment of truth. swap them round halfway through. So they should sound hollow. Oh yes. Perfect. 
left. Hoorah. Slide them off. I'll take them off the paper in a second. Just give them a second to uh, go down slightly. before Jez he has got his YouTube channel up and going um, he's called the death metal chef so have yourself a look on there as well not one for the children <laughs> but he's doing uh, breads sourdough he's done he's done uh, if he was doing uh, Noki last night I never got to watch that one though so I shall have a move to that but there we go oh they smell really good nice and brown on the base mm -mm. very happy with those so there you go brioche buns Whew. it's been a day and a half today Um. So yeah, have a go. Let me know how you get on with them. Um, remember to follow my page, Fiendish Delights. Give me a like. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Fiendish Delights. And I'm on Instagram too. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.